this time on Graveyard Cars. The ghouls gang up to install the drivetrain in the inviolate 1971 343 speed CUDA, while Justin details parts for the same one of eight CUDA. Doug and Justin finish the OE style wheels and exhaust. Finally, Justin builds out the grill for this FC7 CUDA convertible. The unburied dead, dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life, coming back to life. Self-proclaimed Mopar master Mark Warman and his protege painter Will Scott get paid to bring Mopar muscle cars back from the dead. They work with Mark's daughter Alyssa and his cousin Dougie. They're willing to travel anywhere to retrieve a customer's car, detailing how it lived its life and how it died. After that, they bring it back to make it look just like it did the day it was born. All right, I've rounded up the team, the, the A team, to install the drivetrain in our 1971 Plymouth Cuda 340. It has a manual three-speed transmission. How many were built? How many were built? 11. Eight. That's an E for effort. Wow. Dang it. Wow. And it's a convertible. So are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> and here we go. OK, I will lower it down. Spring hangers over there, Alyssa. Are you getting ready to line those yep. up? Nice. Done about two million of these now, haven't we? Yeah. It's always good with a few sets of hands. Keeps the accidents and some from eyes. happening. A little bit lower. Right about there. Got it? All right, let's put the nuts on. I can see that one, but I cannot see the other one. There. Lissa tight? Yep. Great. Okay. All right, come on out and move to the back. We'll do the shackles next. Awesome. I'm gonna do I need to go down mine. anymore? Yes. Good. Okay. Go ahead and slide the shackles in. Once you get the shackle through there, I can raise it up, so just let me know when you get it through. Not yet. Got it? Okay, got it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up. Fourth floor mannequins. Look at that, now we got a rear end in there, huh? All right, so what I got here is a bunch of our 1971 CUDA parts. Um, I, we went through and we got them, you know, set out here. Uh, we're gonna do some restoration on these, so I'm gonna go uh, use our media blaster and we're gonna kinda do a little demonstration of, you know, cleaning up these parts instead of just, you know, taking them off the car and either just throwing, throwing them away. Um, we can actually clean these up because uh, we love to use original stuff. Alyssa's side. Ranch. I'll go get a ranch. I call it a ranch. I'll go like get a ranch. Dressing. Alyssa, are you ready? Uh, Take her down a notch. You're getting crazy. How's that? Beautiful. Easy peasy. Got mm -hmm. it. Love it. Put that on there. Run it 
down. Got it. Nice. Lisa. Got it. Beautiful. All right, guys, let's move to the front. Whoa. What are you doing, you crazy? We're taking too long. We're just rolling it. I think the whole thing's got to go this way, though. It's yes. actually pretty amazing how you can eye this. It's done it a few times, huh, Doug? Yes, we have. Doug used to do it out back of his house in Glenwood. I'm writing a book called Fast Times at Glenwood High. In a mud puddle. People will want to in the gravel. that, I guarantee it. It's a lot in like the, the trailer park boys. Some of the names have been changed to protect the innocent. I'm gonna lower it down now. Okay, so I'll watch. It's called the reverse running this side. Man. Looks like my arms are going backwards, but my again. body's going forwards. It's freaky, huh? Yeah. Doug, make him stop. Can't you make him stop? Had a lot of coffee on my lunch hour. If I tried to dance, he'd stop. Yeah. He would. You guys, this thing dance on? off. Ooh, boogity boogity. <laughs> Doug, what moves do you got? Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. I think we should loosen these up and get them rolled down. I do too. <clears throat> I concur, right? So what we're talking about is the torsion bar has to go in here, it has six sides. This has to roll all the way down and below this surface. So the torsion bar adjuster here has to be backed all the way off. And then Doug, wherever yeah. he's at, might have lost him. So he's gonna loosen this nut. That's gonna allow us to roll this control arm down, this, this adjuster arm, all the way down to where it needs to be. So when we put the torsion bar in and adjust that bolt up, the car sets right. If this is too high, the bar doesn't know. The torsion bar will go in place, but you'll have to run this all the way till you're out of threads and it will still be too low. So having this clocked right when you put the suspension, we've never talked about it before, it's important to do. So I just back that bolt all the way. Now, Doug, are you here with the wrench that you can loosen that? Yeah. Hold this. Okay. I can hold this. Oh, this one's already backed off. Yeah, I already The other did. side wasn't. It's okay. <laughs> where the bar is for this, by chance? Leaning up against that wall right there. loosen it. Okay, I like you. Thank you. I like Dougie. Oh, yeah. Boy. How are we looking, guys? Pretty good. All right. Looking pretty good. This doesn't look like it's going to be as tight of a fit. Uh-uh. And the engine Well, the small block's got a little bit more room. That's a good thing. Oh, look at that just falling right into place, huh? That's nice. We're getting there. You're liking what you're seeing? Looking good. When do you want to feed those shocks in? Oh. You good, Alyssa? Uh, we're good. It's fine. Okay. Everything looks good over here. Okay. So last week we had a lot of snow and rain, and I think Dougie's microchip got wet. <laughs> so they hauled him back home, and this is a new Dougie model here. Oh, oh hold it. Me. How's your shock doing, happening? Alyssa? Mark's, fine. Mark seems to be really excited. You know what I mean? About. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on down. Good. You like that? Yeah. Where are the bolts? <clears throat> I'll hand you yours, Doug. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. There we go. Got my front one started. What we got here is our uh, windshield inner trimming. Um, this is a convertible, so some of these parts are really hard to come by. So if you have ones that are in good shape, you can clean them up and put them back on because if you need to get some other ones, uh, that's gonna be some high dollar stuff that you're looking for. All right, 
a great thing with this sandblaster is you can really assess the damage or the work that needs to be done to a part. Uh, in this case, um, the rust really ate away and has pitted this out, um, and it's kind of eaten away some of the metal. So th this will be something I'll have to run by Mark to see what he wants to do with. Um, AMD makes these, so if we need a replacement, you know, we can get them from them, but um, it's always good to use an original part. So if we can, um, put these back on, but they, they might just be a little bit too far gone. So Dougie did a lot of well drilling in his younger days. He's a big old well driller. And I was talking to his brother not too long ago, Sean. Oh, I dropped it. Yeah, Got my did. back one going. You scared me, Mark. Oh, you take your time. I know, this joke was going somewhere. What are you guys somewhere. doing you take over there? Your time. Right underneath his Money. <laughs> OK. Grab it. Nope. Dude, what are you guys doing over here? Yeah. You're already done? I'm done. OK. Right. Yeah, this is done. Anyway, apparently one of the things that was a recurring thing on the well drilling site was Doug would take one of the drill strips. I'm looking at yours. Yours look good. Yeah. Yeah, this one. After a while, he got used to it, right? I mean, he'd, he'd walk around, he'd take a shot in the melon, he'd forget no, who he is. No, should we run him all the way up my hand? I don't know. No, no I'm let's thinking grab that's what's led up yeah. to today. <laughs> you can only get hit in the head so many times. With the drill right here. Strip, right? Oh, you got it all oh, set up? Oh, boy. Close. You're the best. <laughs> okay, well. Okay, I'm going to run these. Run mine down now. Can I run mine down? Um, are the back ones in? Yep. Yes, go ahead. I can't believe how nice that went in there. That's it was amazing. Way too easy. Can't believe how nice that went in. That's beautiful. Here you go, Doug. Nice. Sure. How's that? Good, Ned. <laughs> All right. Let's put the transmission cross member and then we can raise it up in the air. Hey, that's better than like Ned. Yolanda. Yeah, Ned's much better. out it's turned out really well it's uh, everything you could ask for when restoring an original part it just comes out pretty pretty good something easy to work with yeah it almost looks brand new um, what I got to do is get some satin clear on there um, well I've got to take it apart and put everything back together get it all lubed up get some satin clear on there get it back on the car. Stay tuned. Mark rallies the ghouls to complete the drivetrain installation before Dougie 2.0 needs a reboot. I just went crazy. With his software successfully updated, Dougie tackles the tires and wheels. Finally, Justin installs the OE style wheels and exhaust on this one of eight 340 three speed CUDA convertible. Just as worldwide inflation increased, so did the features in the 1974 Charger, like this one currently awaiting its restoration. Available with automatic speed control, new windshield washer jets mounted on wiper blade arms, an electric heated rear window, optional power windows, standard passenger restraint system with starter interlock, and full volume foam seat backs. 74 featured the Charger two-door hardtop, coupe, two-door coupe with rally package, and the SE hardtop. So whether you were casually cruising or racing to the library to pick up Stephen King's debut novel, Carrie, 1974 had the Charger for you, making this one our Corpse of the Week. OK, 
Okay, so you guys got the bolts tight then? Yep. I'm okay to raise it up? Yes. Everybody out from underneath it? Okay. I'm gonna raise it up, so I'm gonna put the transmission crossmember bolts in. Okay. Oil pan should rest on the drag link. I put a pad in there, so we should be golden. <coughs> Anything look weird? Nope. <coughs> Great. Nope. Wow. What? It's oh. fine. I just went crazy. <laughs> it's fine, I think. All right, we can move this out. Let's get the pogo stick, move the transmission up into place. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Yo. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. What's a, what's a, what's a scenario? <clears throat> Used to have the Monsters Rap CD playing in my Viper. You had it. Golden day. <laughs> Actually, you had it in the Tahoe. I had it in the we Tahoe. took it yeah. to the coast. Yeah. And remember how we had the little like headphones in the back we could choose? Uh huh. And so Caitlin and I would sit back there and choose that over and over again. And then yeah. mom. Monsters of rap. Yeah. Right about there. Oh. Okay. My head. Right. Oh, there you go. There nice. you go. Uh, this, go. Let's put this side in front to back and that side back to front just because that's the way I've seen a lot of them. I don't think there was a rule, but I've seen a lot of them that way. Alyssa. Sorry? No, it's okay. Did Will get the wheels painted for this? Does anybody know? Let's go check out the paint Thanks, shop Doug. and see if Will got I'm those sorry, paint. I've never now seen that before. Now we have to go before. outside and check something. It's cold, I'm not knowing. <laughs> All right, just finished up the taillight housings. These ones you want to be a little bit careful of because they're a soft metal. And uh, it, the blaster can tear them up pretty good. So what you do is you just keep your distance uh, with, your, with your hose or your spray gun and uh, just make sure you don't get too close and start tearing up that metal. This is why a sandblaster is just so awesome to use. Is look how clean it gets that. So great. Some of this stuff, you know, you'll have to use a, a wire wheel after you're done just to bring back some of that sheen to the metal because it's not, not all your parts are going to be this dull. But it's just great having nice clean parts to work with. Using original parts like these, it's just you can't beat it. Beautiful. That's our door for a 1966 Hemi Charger we're working on. That's the pre-paint. That looks nice. Oh, Willie, you've been going to town. There's our purple wheels. Beautiful. So these are brand new replica wheels. They're known as the 450 wheels, 70 and 71. They're the 15.7 steel rim that takes the poverty dog dish hubcap. There's been a lot of these out for a while, the 15.7 steel rims, but they haven't had this coolness. There's the part number right there. There's the Chrysler stamp, and there's your date code. 
So my buddy, Tony, started making these very, very recently. And I think, see the thing about Tony is, he counts on me not going in there and seeing what he makes, because he knows I'm gonna want a good deal on it. So I was just surfing around one day looking for the 15-7 wheel, and here comes Philly Steak up on the, on the Google search. I got him to send me out a pair, and there they are. They're beautiful. So that's what we're putting on the CUDA. The, the CUDA actually originally had a 14-inch rally wheel on it, but the owner wanted those, and I don't blame him a bit. Those will get some E60 15 tires, dog dish, poverty hubcaps, and it'll be beautiful. Those wheels are painted, so tomorrow, let's have, uh, let's get the tires mounted up on it. We can put them on here, and we can actually, here pretty quick, we'll be in a position where we can lower it down and put the tires on it and make it a roller. Sounds good. Nice. Okay, so we want to do the, you got the torsion bars in? Not yet. Okay, let's do it. Now these are tough. These are tough. <clears throat> they can be, and they can't be. Okay. <laughs> they can't be. <laughs> you gotta make sure you that seem it's- seem short. <clears throat> oh. It's not in. It's pretty close. See my line up there? Mm -hmm. I just wonder if this needs to come down some. That meat okay with your yes, approval? Yes, sir. I like it. Okay, let's do this side. Okay. So I think it needs to go up. Maybe, maybe. up a hair? There it is. <laughs> Just like magic, baby. There it is. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. Got it, nice. Yeah. Run that bad boy up. I got it. Okay. Looks really good, you guys. That went really smooth. That was nice. So don't forget your clips. Yep. For your torsion bars. Uh-huh. Your boots. Set your adjustment on your torsion bars, and we'll put some tires on it maybe tomorrow or the next day as soon as we get them mounted up. Guys did a good job. Good job, Doug. Alyssa, give them a thank hand. Thank you. Oh, you guys aren't done. I'm, I'm oh, done. thank you. Family. What? So, no, I thought you did a great job, buddy. We did. Anyway, looks good, huh? Yes, it does. Yes, right? it does. Let's see your dance. Crack shot team. Number one, fruit of my loin and cutting Dougie. <laughs> Can I please have a different nickname? <laughs> Now that I got all the parts blasted, um, I'm gonna take them inside. I'm gonna show Mark, uh, see what he wants to do with some of this stuff, if we actually wanna replace it or uh, go ahead and restore what we got. Um, but now that this stuff is done, it's one step closer to getting this car back on the road. In our Corpse of the Week, we learned that the 1974 Chargers came with optional power windows. What steering wheel would you get if you chose option code S84? Tough, three steel spokes with padded horn, padded three spokes with simulated wood grain inserts, none of the above. Find out after the break. What steering wheel would you get if you chose option code S84 in the 1974 Charger? If you guessed the tough steering wheel, you were right. Optional for an extra cost, the steering wheel had three unpadded steel spokes with a padded horn button and a small diameter soft rim. But if you wanted to get tough, power steering was required. So today I have a set of 15 by seven factory wheels. Will has painted them in violet purple and I just love the color. I have to mount a set of Goodyear E6015s on these wheels and get them ready to go on that beautiful little 71 Cuda convertible. It's gonna be a pretty car when it's done. So I'm gonna pop in a few valve stems. Got a pretty cool little tool here for pulling these in, in case people aren't familiar with this. Little leverage here. Screw it on, pull it down over the side, pops it in there, 
seats it real good. Just like that. I usually spin them a little, make sure they're seated good. So uh, I've got all my valve stems in. I'm gonna take them over the tire machine now and put some tires on. So now that Doug, Alyssa, and Mark all got the drivetrain and the rear axle put in, uh, we just got our exhaust from Accurate. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna start with the mounting brackets. Um, I already got some in there because I don't wanna lift and you know lower the car a bunch of times. So I already went ahead, got that prepped, got those in there. So I'm gonna start with the heat shields and then move on to the uh, hanging brackets. And then I'm gonna work my way from the front to the back, putting on the actual exhaust. I like to get some uh, soap on the inside of the tire. First part of this is pretty easy. Just pops right on there. You bring the arm over, drop it down against the rim, tighten it in place, and then rotate it. Now we'll inflate it. I'm gonna take it up to about 40 pounds to start with. Okay, Got these little valve cores here that uh, we have to screw in place with 40 pounds of tire pressure, trying to blow it out of my fingers. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay, see where we're at now on tire pressure? Whoa, not bad, 34. Okay, put a valve cap on it. Come. More work on the one of eight in Violet 1971 CUDA 343 speed convertible. Dougie performs a balancing act with the CUDA's wheels, and Justin knocks out the OE style exhaust. But that's not all. Justin does a super detailed build out of the gorgeous grill for this ultra rare FC7 CUDA. Got the tires all mounted up with minimal battle here. We're gonna take these out and pressure wash and clean the sidewalls and uh, get all the blue paint off the white walls so they look really nice. So here's our dog dish hubcaps that we're gonna put on here. This is kind of what it's gonna look like. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to see this car finish. 71 CUDA convertible, 343 speed.
Okay, so I got the tires mounted on the new in violet wheels for the 71 Cuda, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish balancing the other wheels. I've already done one and uh, balanced out really good on our new Coates 875 wheel balancer. So all I have to do now is spin it. Okay, so we have our two measurements here. So we roll this around until we get our 10 dots on the left, top. So that gives us our inside setting to put our ounce and a half weight. We're using lead weights on this and they're uh, got an ounce and a half here. That's nice. So I got to mount this one at uh, 12 o'clock position all the way at the top here. In our Corpse of the Week, that the 1974 Charger came with optional automatic speed control, new windshield washer jets mounted on wiper blade arms, and an optional electric heated rear window. True or false? Air conditioning was an extra cost on SE, Coupe, and standard chargers in 1974. Find out after the break. So, we learned in our Corpse of the Week that the 1974 Charger came with optional automatic speed control. And now we've made the claim that air conditioning was an extra cost on SE, Coupe, and standard chargers in 1974. Were we telling the truth? Yes. It cost extra. If you didn't know, now you do. Get a full reading here. Now, one thing we can do, if a weight's too heavy, we can clip some of it off and lighten it up a little bit. So, put this one right here at 12 o'clock. Then we'll give it another spin and see where we're at. Oh, look at that. I trimmed that one and a half ounce weight down to 1.3, put it on the side, and I got a zero, zero balance. So we got it. Okay, so I got a couple more left to go, and uh, I'll take this one off here. All right, I'm gonna take these to my good buddy, Justin, and see if he'll mount these up on that car for me. What's up, Doug? I got my torque wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna torque these wheels. Uh, you wanna make sure that the car is under its own weight after it's under its own weight. How you wanna do this is you wanna torque these down in a star pattern. It's just the proper way to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll get this one and I'll finish off the rest of them. So when you hear that click, um, that means you're, you're to torque uh, to your spec that you set. So I'm setting these right now to uh, 65 foot-pounds. So you just set your gauge, go ahead and tighten. Um, I just give it a little two clicks just to make sure. Just want to be safe. Got our awesome dog dishes. I'm gonna put these on. So with these, you want to kind of just 
lock them into the groove, and then just give it a good, give it a good pop. Make sure, make sure you're secure on there, and that's it. Those look so good on there. Cool thing about working over here is you gotta, you get to see the process of the, of it going through metal, the mud room, all that work. It comes over here and just to be able to see these cars go together and be able to put these together is just an awesome thing. Uh, this thing has not rolled for two, two plus years and it's, it's under its own, its own weight. It's got wheels, it's a roller now. So, pretty excited. All right, we got our 1971 CUDA front grille assembly right here. I'm gonna kind of just go through the process of uh, installing all your chrome trim. Um, grill inserts and headlight bezels. And so we'll just start with our grill inserts. You just take these little four pegs right here. They just line up in these holes. Just be careful you don't wanna scratch up the inside. So when you put it in there, make sure you put it in there pretty careful. And it should slide into place really well. Just want to make sure you, that uh, before you go ahead and do this, that you actually set out in the right orientation that they need to be in, um, because these are actually different sizes. Get the end one. Want to go slow, make sure you don't scrape up the inside of your grill. All right, now that I got those set in place, I'm gonna go ahead and put our retainer clips in there. So this one right here, that's gonna be your aftermarket, and this is your OE style clip. So how these work is they slide right over the peg right here and these teeth actually lock it in place so you cannot back that out. These are really good clips, so they lock in there and they'll stay. How I'm gonna put these on is I, use, I usually use a socket and I set it right on there. Just get some pressure on the back end and use that socket just to press that clip right on there. These ones typically go on a lot easier than the, those aftermarket ones do. When putting these on, make sure you get enough pressure on the back of these little plastic grills, because they will break. You don't want to break your brand new grill inserts before you get to be able to put it on your car. All right, now that I got the clips on the backs of our uh, grill inserts, I'm gonna go ahead and put our stainless steel trim on there. So if you look, you put, the, put your clips in here and these little slotted grooves. So you see these locator holes? You slide right into there. Just rotate it down. Make sure you get your clips lined up with the slots. Just gonna make sure when you slide this in here, get it, to get it snapped down in place, you don't wanna scrape the edge. They're pretty, they, they can be difficult to get in, especially if it's gonna be aftermarket uh, pieces. So you just kind of snap those in place and that's how those go. But we're gonna go ahead and put these ones on right now. So these little tabs right here, they go in these slots right here. And you just take those little metal pieces and you just bend them over. So this piece is gonna slide right over the lip right here. Just make sure you get those, those little pegs lined up. It's gonna slide over, it's gonna be nice and snug. Just kind of work your way, your way from the middle back. I'm actually not gonna fold the tabs over until I get each piece on there, just in case we have to pull it off. You don't wanna have to bend those tabs because they will wear out and they will break. So I'm gonna move on to the bottom piece. Same thing, same little tabs. There's some little slots right in here. That one, and I'll go with that one. Another good way to help yourself uh, line these up is you find the peak and the center of your grill. That's another good way that you can help line it up. Kind of work pressure all the way down. Same with the other side. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put our edge pieces on. They're gonna go right over here over this lip and they will actually, there's this little recessed part on the, uh, on our diagonal pieces um, and these will fit right over those. Some things I like to do because they come like a little bit pre-bent. Um, I like to take those and just use a pair of pliers like this and just kind of straighten those out. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to locate the holes. So again, just work from one end to the other. Oh man, these ones fit great. There we go, that's almost perfect. All right, I'm gonna go head over to the other side. I'm gonna get that part done too. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go through and just kind of bend these straight just a little bit. All right. Same thing. Work from one side to the other. Great, all those are in place, so I'm gonna tip this thing upside down and I'm gonna fold all those little tabs over. So they poke through right there. I'll just take a little flathead screwdriver. Just kind of just bend them over just like that. And as I'm doing this, I'm actually pushing up on the uh, trim itself from the bottom side just to make sure we get a really good tight fit. And there you have it, an assembled 1971 CUDA front grille.